All lecturers in language and arts faculty, the head of Students Association of Kennesaw University of Education, or the representative, the head of Students Legislative of Kennesaw University of Education, or the representative, the head of Students Association of Language and Arts faculty, or the representative, the head of Students Association of each department in Language and Arts faculty, participants and all the committees. Welcome to Academic Seminar on Cross-Cultural Understanding and Global Perspective, organized by Students Association of English Education Department and English Education Department in cooperation with Regional English Language Office or RELO, U.S. Embassy, Jakarta. It's such a great chance to be in this event today for all of us, but before we continue to the main agenda, let's be silent for a moment and bow our head for the shake of solemn and sincere prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, let's start the prayer. Prayer is end. Now, let us watch together a Bolivian dance performance from English Education Department students. Please welcome Scar Jagat Dance.
gentlemen, now let us hear a speech from the head of English Education Department as well as open this event officially. For Bapak Harry Santosa, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me tell you a story. I met Megan on a bus. Can you believe that? The name of the bus is Wetkudoro. Are you familiar with that bus? No. Wetkudoro is one of the initiatives from Jokowi Widodo. Joko Widodo, I mean. yeah, our president now. That bus uh, is for the city too. So. We met on a bus during our city tour in the 61st of Tablet International Conference last time. Introduced by Fabio, another young energetic man, uh, one of the rail fellows from the US Embassy too, uh, who is assigned in Pekanbaru, I think, in uh, Sumatra. And he told me that, you know what, we have one in, in Bali. And we are busy. Look, we were busy looking for Megan that time actually, because she, she was busy maybe buying batiks or things <laughs> in the batik shops. And with Bawagi also uh, on that bus, we tried to talk and then brought the initiative of inviting the real fellows to our beloved department. <clears throat> there was a program called. Uh, what's the name? Of fellow or Rello Fellow? Yeah, from that? Yeah. So basically, it's inviting uh, one of the fellows to stay here in your department for 10 months, or 9 or 10 months. So basically, they come to your department teaching English and other relevant uh, programs to help the department. We, from the English department, actually tried to propose for this program, but it seems that our university as the institutional working unit is not ready because one of the requirements is to uh, to give a fully furnished uh, accommodation. Well, let's hope that this program can be realized in the future. But then it doesn't mean we have to stop, right? So. I keep maintaining the uh, contact with Megan because Megan is now in UNU, in Bali. So if UNU can do that, Unixa can do that too. Do you think so? My personal engagement with Relo has been long time ago. I met uh, one uh, the previous head of Relo. The name is Michael Rudder. He's a very kind and very supportive uh, manager of Relo. And once I we become the keynotes in Surabaya, so I was invited by Pedri Adibuana in Surabaya, and also Michael Rudder and Alan Barrett at that time uh, as one of the fellows. We become we became one of the keynotes uh, to give the. Uh, on the topics of teaching and also uh, teachers and also ICT that time to the teachers in Surabaya and <clears throat> I'm happy because now I can still uh, maintain that engagement that we met the head the new the new head the name is Jennifer and she is also very supportive and very kind and hopefully if you the students plan to do things relating to English improvement and development of, on proficiency and professional development, do not, do not hesitate to contact Relo. They will be very helpful to help you, happy to help you. Okay? I must thank the students and especially the committee, Dharma, Bayu, and also uh, the other members of the committee for making this happen. Remember, an activity cannot happen if you work alone. Okay? So, please uh, salute them and give applause to the committee. 
Uh, I also thank you, uh, thank all the lecturers who managed to, to come today. Pak Pastor, Pak Wangi, Bu Sonia, Bu Eka, Pak Eka, Bu Karina, There is another one, Bu Eka, but uh, cannot come, Bu Dia, Bu Dayu Estri, and Bu Sukriyanti, and Pak Indra, who managed to come. And there are some others who probably will come. And some others also texted me this morning. Uh, very busy day, actually, <laughs> uh, from the morning. And um, um, and let's hope that this uh, event can be successfully conducted. Now it's time to welcome Megan. She will present and bring you hopefully a new perspective on the global perspective and also how cultures are different to each other. You already see the dance now. This is a part of your local wisdom. As a future leader, as a young man or as a young uh, uh, people and the hope of the country, you have to be able to make this uh, synchronized nicely. You have to synergize the local wisdom and the global perspective. By that way, believe me, you will be more rounded people, not rounded body, but rounded person and also be ready to face the future. I always tell my students that all the students in the other part of the world now already running very fast. And now you are walking slowly like snails and happy. So think about it, open your mindset and be the future leader. Thank you very much. Because of the, uh, the committee asked me to open this one officially, there should be an official opening for this. Uh, I will officially open this academic seminar on cross-cultural understanding and global perspective. And hopefully everything will run smoothly and we will gain the most uh, benefits from this one. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the main agenda. For the moderator, Bapak Harry Santosa, the time is yours. Um, have you had breakfast? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Breakfast is good. Yeah. Please have breakfast. Do, uh, do you have yellow rice normally? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the reason why I'm here is not because I'm trying to handle things and everything. I'm not the guy Sati, I'm not Sati uh, seller. But basically because we try our best to find the, the moderators before this. But it seems that our friends are a bit busy yeah, before. So I just decided, okay, I'll do it. Uh, so, I need to read the bio of Megan, so she's, she's embarrassed now. Well, Megan Moen is an English language fellow at Universitas Sudayana in Denpasar, Bali. Bali. She is from the east coast of the United States, born in New Jersey. Are you familiar with New Jersey? Yeah, if you like music, to the John Bon Jovi. Yeah, so it's very famous. Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. Are you familiar with that? Or are you familiar with K-pop? Or uh, uh, the newest Ada Apa dan Cinta line fashion, okay? Have you watched that movie? That drama? Yeah. The line provider has created the continuation of the Ada Apa dan Cinta yesterday. And it went viral. Okay? And let me continue. Grew up, she, she grew up in Maryland and Virginia and spent the last six years living and teaching in New York City. She completed her undergraduate studies in linguistics and French at the University of Virginia and received her master's in TESOL from Hunter College. Before come, becoming a high school teacher in Queens, she taught English in Brittany, French. 
She spends her free time in Bali studying Bahasa Indonesia and exploring this beautiful country. Okay? Good. So you can expect much from her and please ask as many as you can. Okay? Alright, let's welcome Megan Merwin. Okay? Selamat pagi. Um, as Pat Perry said, my name is Meg Merwin, um, and I'm an English language fellow at Universitas Udayana. Uh, before I continue and talk about my experience here, I'd like to thank the English department for inviting me to come to Singaraja. Um, I am. Um, I haven't been to the north of Bali until yesterday. I had gone as far as Badugal, but I hadn't finished going down the mountain. So, now I'm lucky. Um, and uh, so, Pat Harry asked me to come and speak to you about uh, my experience as a Bule living in Indonesia. So, um, before I start, I'm going to tell you where I'm from, um, because I know the United States is a big country. Okay. All right. So I know the United States is a big country, but I'm from the East Coast, so this side. And um, I'm surprised you've heard of New Jersey, because it's a very small state, and not many people care about it. But um, I was born there. But as a typical American family, my parents moved a lot, okay? I know in Indonesia, at least in Bali, we tend to stay uh, where we're born. But in America, my father moved south because of a job. So I grew up in Maryland, right outside Washington, D.C. You guys are nodding your heads. Why do you know Washington, D.C.? What's famous about Washington, D.C.? White House. So, why is the White House in Washington, D.C.? It's the capital. Okay, so I grew up outside the nation's capital. Um, and uh, I lived there until I was 30. And then I moved north. And I spent the last um, five years teaching English in New York City. And I also got my master's. So, uh, before I talk to you about the differences that I see between the West and Indonesia, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself so you understand where I'm coming from. Okay? So, um, oh, a picture is missing. Oy. Okay, well, so, um, when I introduce myself in Bali, I tell my students that my name is Ni Made Meg. <laughs> When I go to Jayco and they ask me my name and they don't understand it, I tell them my name is Megawati. <laughs> so my name has become Mi Made Megawati. Um, I am the second daughter in my family, and like a lot of families in America, uh, my sisters and I do not all have the same parents. But I grew up with two sisters, and in Indonesia, the most popular question when you meet me is, how old are you? <laughs> First question. Uh, second question, are you married? <laughs> and then, why aren't you married? <laughs> and do you have children? <laughs> so, I am not married, I do not have children. I don't know if I want to have children. This is a Western answer. Um, in America, our parents might want grandchildren, 
but it's not expected as soon as you get married before you are 30. So in Bali, if you're not married by 30, something's wrong with you. <laughs> At least that's what I'm starting to understand. I'm sorry if I just insulted some lecturers. <laughs> sorry, oh. But, um, I really respect that you all know who you love and have found someone and are ready to be married. Uh, I've been busy traveling and getting my master's and getting married is really scary. Um, so, uh, anyway, in America, don't ask how old are you and are you married. So, because you're English students, I'll tell you this. It's considered rude. And when I first came here, I thought a lot of people were asking because they wanted to ask me out. So, how old are you? Oh, you're my age. Are you married? No. Ooh, you're available. Okay, so, what are you doing today? <laughs> I came with one suitcase, one pack, two carry-ons. Uh, I have been here, Suda, Simbilan Bulan, and Dua Ari. So, nine months, two days. Um, I leave in December, not happy. Um, and that is my dog. His name is Fox, Ruba. Um, and uh, so this was, this was six o'clock in the morning. I couldn't make my flight because it snowed. Okay, it does not snow here. I'm dreaming of snow. Um, and when I got on the plane, I gave my winter coat to my sister. So when I get off the plane December 21st, my sister is picking me up at the airport because she has my winter coat, not because she loves me. Um, and when I get to Baltimore, Maryland, where my sister lives, uh, it will be five degrees Celsius, so it will be very cold, and there will probably be snow. Yes. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been cold. Um, but here, there's supposed to be a picture of me with my students in America. So in America, I was a high school English teacher for six years in New York City, in Queens, in one of the largest schools in Queens, 3,200 students. Okay, so Tiga Pulu Dua Ratus. No. Tiga Ribu Dua Ratus. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Am I Bahasa? Um, so, lots of students, lots of different colors. Um, New York City is one of the most diverse parts, it is the most diverse part of the United States, and Queens is one of the most diverse boroughs. Um, and most of my students are from a Spanish-speaking country or Bangladesh. And we don't have a lot of Indonesians. In fact, we don't have any. Um, and there's a reason. You guys have a country where you feel safe and you are in a place that's a democracy and you're not worried about anything happening. So, okay, um, so this is Indonesia. Um, about a year ago, I knew where this country was but I never thought I'd live here. And I'm not sure that I knew that Bali was part of Indonesia. Um, I can't remember. I'm sorry. So um, I applied to be an English language fellow, and I asked to live in Europe, and I was uh, contacted by the Rilo in Jakarta, and he said, would you like to live in Indonesia? And I said, why not? Sure. So I thought I'd be living in Jawa, because Indonesia. Um, but a week later, I got an email saying that I was going to Bali. And my family and friends thought it was a joke, because I was going to the most beautiful island in the world. I'm not just saying that to make you happy. That's the view the world has of Bali. You guys live in the most beautiful paradise in the world. And I agree, it's 
it's beautiful, but it's not perfect. Um, and it's not paradise most of the time. Um, and so in February, I moved here. And since I've moved here, being an English language fellow has allowed me to go everywhere. So during the week, I teach at Universitas Udayana. I work with students, and I teach different English classes. And on the weekends and in, during vacations, I go to different areas and represent my country and the culture. And I give workshops on teaching, and I hang out with high school students. And so now I've been to Aceh, which I'd never heard of. And I have been to Palembang, and Jakarta, and Malang, and Georgia, and Solo, and I won't keep naming, but I've been to Manokwari, that's my farthest east. Um, and I have to say that this country definitely represents the bottom. So, um, there are 16 English language fellows in Indonesia. Um, that's quite a lot. Uh, we are the country, you are the country that has the most fellows. And um, I was told when I came here, as an American you go to the embassy and you get a speech from a security guy. And he says, you are in a very safe country, don't worry, but there are three rules. And this is how I usually introduce myself. I broke the three rules in the first month. Okay. So the first rule, I went out at night because there was a coffee shop across my street that has internet. And so uh, it was end of February and I went for a walk. It was dark. Americans like to go for walks, uh, but we're also used to there being street lights. And walking and I fell in a hole <laughs> up to here. <laughs> it was impressive. And in my head I thought, ew, there's, okay, and I jumped out, I don't know how. And um, I walked back to my apartment and I didn't look because I was scared. Um, and in my head I was thinking, I need to call my father. I can't call my father, who do I call? Um, and yes, at some point, you guys are in your 20s, at some point you're going to realize you have to be an adult. So I got back to my house and the neighbor started screaming um, because there was blood everywhere. And I went to my host family because I live in an apartment in a host family. And I said, can I have some first aid kit? And he looked at me and he said, no, you're going to the hospital. So my, that night I broke the first rule, which was do not fall in any holes. <laughs> you guys have some amazing holes in Jakarta, but they're even more amazing in Bali, especially Dempozar. Um, so I went to the hospital, and that's when I broke rule number two. The U.S. Embassy, my boss said, please don't go to the hospital. Um, mainly because he didn't want us getting hurt. Um, so I went to the hospital and the doctor didn't speak English and I got 10 stitches. So I have this beautiful tattoo now on my leg. I'm very proud of it. Um, and uh, the doctor kept saying, does this hurt? Or he kept going, pain? And I kept saying, yeah. And he kept going, hee hee hee. <laughs> so, that's great. He was a great guy. His name was Pak Juni, Julie. Julie. Um, so that was my first two rules, and I called my boss the next day, and I said, Bah, I'm really sorry, I broke two rules. And he said, welcome to Indonesia. So, um, in case you're wondering, the third rule is uh, motorbikes are dangerous, please don't ride them. But he doesn't really mean it, and I love motorbikes, so I go on them all the time. Because you can't live in Indonesia if you don't ride a motorbike. So. Um, oh, hi. Um, so, let's start talking about the United States. This is, ah, I can move. Okay, so, this is the United States, and we are a land of immigrants. There's really no one, no, sorry, nobody really came from the United States. 
Even the Native Americans are immigrants. So the majority of immigrants came from Europe. Okay? Is this good or not good? Is this working? Yes. Okay. So the majority of immigrants came from Europe. Nowadays, a lot of the immigrants come from Latin America, okay? And we also have immigrants from Asia, but it's usually China, India, and Bangladesh. We don't have a lot of Indonesians, as I said, because you guys have a country that's pretty safe, and your culture is to stay here and help take care of your ancestors, and we have temples and family members. So there are Indonesians in America, but not a lot. Um, and uh, the reason here there's a lot of immigrants is because the governments are not very stable. Um, so in the United States, the second most popular spoken language is Spanish. Okay. So I have never taken a Spanish class, but I speak a poquito. I speak a little because I have to. So this is hard to see, but I'm going to explain it, so don't worry. Um, this is how people look at culture. What's this? Wow! Okay. I've never used one of these. Okay. Um, so this thing here, oh, and the problem is, I'm left-handed, hold on. Okay. Um, this thing here is an iceberg. So if you've ever seen a photo of an iceberg, there's a little bit that sticks out of the water. But underwater, it's huge. Or you don't know how big it is. Hello. Um, so culture is like this. You see the differences between us because you can see me, right? I'm Bule. Okay? <laughs> when you see me walking on the beach, you know that I don't belong here. I don't even have to talk. Um, today, I'm dressed somewhat Indonesian because I put on a batik. Okay? In America, I probably before I came here, wouldn't have heard of this before. Um, and so you all right now are dressed Western, and for me, that's comforting, but if you were to show up, maybe it's better for me to use the other one. But if you were to show up in my house wearing a sarong and a kabaya, right, people in America would think, ooh, you are not American. You're Eastern. It's, it's okay, don't stress. <laughs> Just breathe. Um, so, the, the differences here are the obvious ones. Food is a huge difference. This morning, I went to get breakfast at the hotel, and she said, nasi goreng. And I said, no thank you. Um, I like nasi goreng, but in America, we don't eat nasi goreng for breakfast. Um, so I had roti bakar, which is what I would eat. Um, you guys love sambal. I like sambal sedikit. So what you might think is normal food, I usually think is pedas sekali. Bobby Guling is delicious, but I need the sambal de pizza. Um, notice I know vocabulary about food in Bahasa Indonesia. Um, what we just saw right here, the dancing, you would never see that in America. Huge cultural difference, okay? Beautiful, but we don't dance like that where I'm from, okay? Um, and it goes like that, popular music. I'd never heard of K-pop until I got to Indonesia. And I think Pop Harry is jealous that i never heard, because I don't think he likes it either. Um, and, uh, yeah, those Korean boys look like women to me. I, 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 it's always the boys in the group. I don't understand the lipstick. It, it's creepy. Um, I'm sorry. But as we get a little below, so this is water, and as we go under the water, we start to see differences that you wouldn't notice unless you interacted with someone from another culture. So this one, hmm, this one, eye behavior, is a big one. Um, in my culture, when you're talking to someone, you look them in the eyes, right? 
and I do this with everyone I know because it shows that I trust them and it shows that I'm telling the truth. So if a student who's from Asia won't look me in the eyes, I think you're lying, okay? But for you, you're showing me respect. So if I didn't know about this cultural difference, which I didn't used to know, um, I would get very upset with you. And I have gotten upset with my students because a student will come late to class, I will let them in, and I will say, why were you late? And the student will look down, and I'll say, and in my head I'm thinking, here comes a lie. Whatever this person's going to say to me is a lie, because that's my culture. And so the student will say, I was in the bathroom, and I'll say, why are you lying to me? Okay? And that's a cultural difference that I would never have known if I didn't come to Indonesia. Um, another, uh, as we go deeper, nation, uh, notions of modesty. Bali is pretty open about clothing. You guys are closer to America than Jawa. But when I go to Jawa, I don't walk the beach in shorts. And when I was in Aceh, I did not wear shorts. I didn't even wear, I didn't even wear tank tops. So Indonesia and America have different ideas of what's appropriate for women to wear in public. Um, and I'll say this now, I'm a little horrified by the Taurus and Kuta, so I'm sorry for what they wear. <laughs> My father would kill me if I wore that. Um, this one is another one, uh, relationships to animals. My dog in America lives in my house and sleeps in my bed, and I take him with me places. You guys think I'm crazy, and I know it, and you just don't want to say it. Here, I have a dog. I didn't pick the dog, the dog found me, and he's been living at my house for the last seven months, and his name is Brownie, and he loves me because I let him in my house. I don't let him in my bed. I let him in my house and I pet him and I give him food and I treat him like an American dog. So he thinks I'm pretty cool. Um, and I feel bad when I leave because I, he has to go back to being Indonesian. Unless I take him with me. Okay. Um, and it keeps getting different. Um, this theory of disease you guys have a sickness here that I never heard of. You get sick because of the wind. On G uh, yeah. For me, that's crazy. Okay? But for your parents, that's very serious. Same with you guys wear jackets on your motorbikes because you're cold and you don't want to get sick. I'm like, oh my god. Okay, so that's a cultural difference. Um, and it keeps going down. So, some things you notice right away, and some you won't notice unless you study abroad, or unless you uh, become friends with a bule. Okay. So, today I'm gonna talk to you about the East versus the West. And I am the West, and you are the East. And this isn't in any way rude. Um, I think it's because, a long time ago, the colonists, which were in Europe, thought of us as the east, uh, the west, and you guys were to the east, okay? Um, but here we have stereotypes, um, and I'm not, I'm a lot smarter now. This guy is not Indonesian. <laughs> he is Japanese. I think all Japanese people look like him. Um, and this guy is supposed to represent my country, but he's actually my stereotype for people from Texas, which is a state in the South. Um, this cowboy hat is very popular if you're going out. And these boots are popular, but I don't know anyone that wears this. Um, so we're going to talk about East versus West. And when I talk about East, it's not just Indonesia, but China and Japan. And West is Europe and America. But remember, I didn't study the East. So if I say anything you disagree with, you have to say something, and I won't be insulted. Okay, just like um, I'm gonna talk about the West,
that some of the things don't apply to myself or my family, but it applies in general to my culture. Okay? All right. So um, as we look at these slides, the blue is going to be me, the West, and the red is going to be you, the East, and we're going to try and figure out what they mean. Okay? So this one, we got me, and we got you. Um, and this is true all the time in Indonesia for me. So, what do you think this is? Soup, okay, soup or? Okay, so um, this is true. We got these snowflakes, okay? Americans and Westerners don't like to eat soup or drink hot things when it's hot outside. It, for me, it's weird when someone says, do you want some te panas? No, I'm already panas, I don't want to. I want to go swimming in an ice bath right now. So um, we also don't really like hot food in the, the summer. So sopayam, sotoayam, um, sotobabi, I like it, but I don't want to eat it here because I'm so hot. Um, and your soto I am is a lot better than my soto I am in America. I agree. But it's just too hot. Um, and here, you guys um, will eat and drink hot things regardless of the weather. I actually have a friend from Korea and she will drink hot things when it's hot because she says it makes her feel cooler. I think she's crazy. <laughs> so, um, if an American to your house and you ask them if they want hot tea and it's hot outside, don't be offended if they say no thank you. Okay. Um, again, this is me and this is you. This can be seen in a couple of ways, but I see this as getting things done or relationships. Um, on the here, notice it's very simple, and here it's everywhere. <laughs> so uh, last week I called Garuda because I needed a copy of a receipt, and they said, Tida Visa, and I said, okay. So then I talked to my friend, and she said, I know someone who knows someone who works at Garuda. And I said, why does that matter? She said, just tell me what's wrong, I'm going to make a phone call. So she called her friend, who called her friend, who called her mother, and 20 or 30 minutes later, I got an email with what I needed. In America, if I call Garuda and I say, I need this, they will send it to me. It doesn't matter who I am. But here, it seems, you need to know someone. And as a boule, I don't know anyone. So I can't ever get anything done here. Um, I mean, the same happens at the university I work at. The AC in my office stopped working. So I went to the secretary of the English department and I said, who do I talk to? And he said, no, I have to call my boss, who has to call the dean, who has to call the dean, who then calls the boss of the guy who fixes the air conditioner. <laughs> I just wanted someone to come in my office and hit the air conditioner and make it work. So I went and found the guy and said, Pa, bisa datang. And of course, he didn't want to say no because I'm bule and he has no idea what I need. So he comes to my office and I said, Ti dat kerja. And he said, okay. And 10 minutes later, it was working and I gave him chocolate. <laughs> Done. Okay. And that's some, somewhat what I see here is a lot of times, it takes a phone call or two in America, whereas here you need to know a lot of people. Um, okay, this is not meant to shock anyone. This is, <laughs> um, this is my country, and this is your country. So I am Boule. Shocking, I know. Um, and everywhere I go here, I'm told that my skin is very pretty, okay? And it scares me. Um, in American culture, this is getting to be a little uh, out of date, but a lot of women, especially, and boys, want to be tan. 
They want to be your color. Okay, they don't want to be white. And you guys, for some strange reason, <laughs> talk about wanting to be white. Which her, drives me crazy. My, one of my best friends here is from Sumba. And he is dark. He is darker than dark. He's probably darker than the doors. And, he's, <laughs> and he always says to me, I'm so black. I'm black. And I always say to him, no, you're not. You're chocolate, and you're beautiful. Why is that a problem? So, um, when I first came to Indonesia, I bought deodorant. Okay? And I didn't even look at it. I was just like, I know that brand, I bought it. I got home, and it said whitening. Why do you guys want white armpits? Like, I, I, I just imagine everybody walking around. Like, I don't understand. So, now we all pay really close attention, the fellows, we all pay very close attention to the products we buy because we don't want to be white. We just are. Um, there is, a couple weeks ago, I went grocery shopping with my friend, Ari, from Sumba, and I was talking to him, and I got some soap, and I put it in my basket, and I went to get some shampoo, and he was behind me, and he took the soap, and he put it back, and took another one. I was like, Ari, what are you doing? He said, you're already white, you don't need this. Okay. So you guys have white soap, white deodorant. We don't have that in America. I think it's dangerous. Like, I don't want to know what chemicals are doing that to you. Um, but that's a cultural difference. And I see it with my driver from the university. He drives me home on his motorbike. And he wears a jacket. And I always say to him, Pa, panas. And he goes, yeah, ti dat mal? Black. <laughs> it is like 90 degrees. I am, I'm barely wearing clothes because I'm so hot. And my driver is wearing a winter coat because he doesn't want to get dark. <laughs> So, cultural difference, okay? I, in my head, am like, okay, and I'm not judging you, but I do think you're a little crazy. Um, but just know that my family thinks, and my family and friends think that you all have the most beautiful skin colors ever, and you all look at my family and think, wow. Okay. And it's even, it's not that bad in Indonesia, but when I was in Taiwan seeing my best friend, they are even more obsessed with getting, staying light. Okay, walking around with umbrellas and jackets and masks. So, and those crazy K-pop guys that look like they're dead? Yeah. That's makeup. Okay, so on my side we have a sun and a happy person. And we have rain and an unhappy person. And you guys so happy. <laughs> so I remember you can always say that I'm wrong. Don't worry, it won't hurt my feelings. But I will tell you my side of the story. In America, if it's sunny, everyone is happy, unless it's hot. And then they complain. If it's raining, everybody complains. All the time. That's all I talk about. So like Facebook status. It's raining, I hate the rain. It's sunny, I'm so happy. Okay, and that's typical of my country. Um, since I've been to Bali, it has rained not very much. I'm dying for rain, I love rain. I love the rain, I was looking forward to rainy season. I don't think it really exists. I think it was a lie. Because I keep asking and I keep getting told next month. So, um, I would like it to rain. Uh, but apparently, you all are always happy, and we not. If it snows, people are unhappy. If it's too hot, they're unhappy. So the weather is very important in my culture uh, for making people unhappy. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah. This is very true. Alone? together. Uh, Americans, especially, I'll talk about Americans, we are independent and individuals. We like to be alone, uh, which kind of scares people here. My host, I live in a coast, 
in someone's house. So there's a family, and they have apartments. And the family, when I first moved there, was always inviting me over. So I would always go over. Oh, come eat dinner with us. Okay, go eat dinner. I like to be alone. So I would go eat dinner because they don't want me to be alone. But I want to be alone. <laughs> so I would purposely avoid seeing them around dinner time so I could eat alone. Okay? I like to be alone. I like to choose my own TV shows. I like to be able to take a shower and walk from the shower to the kitchen and not have to get dressed. I like to dance to my own music and not have anyone watch. Okay? There's a beauty in being alone um, and being an individual. Uh, but I think you all, tell me if I'm wrong, I think you all like to be with other people. And you're used to living in a house with your family. And you will live with your family until you get married. Unless you're a boy and it's until you die. Right? <laughs> Some of you. Unless most of you. Those of you who are Wyans and Hutus, if you're not, maybe you'll move out. But uh, in American culture, we leave our family when we're 18. We go to college. If we don't go to college, we still move out after high school. And we don't usually return home. I go back to my house for holidays, but I never sleep at my dad's house anymore. It's my father's house. Okay, and that's somewhat of a difference from what you all are used to. Um, so, and I have students in Bali, in Denpasar, who tell me all the time, we don't want to go home because no one's at our house. Whereas I, when I was in high school, I used to try to get home as soon as possible before my dad got home, so I could watch whatever TV shows I wanted to watch. And so I could eat whatever I wanted without him knowing. in a house, uh, two hours from his daughters. We see him maybe once every two months. I talk to him on the phone maybe once a week. Okay. I bet you see your parents and your grandparents at least once a day. Or if you don't, somebody sees them. My dad lives in a community where he doesn't have family, but he has friends. And that's typical of a lot of Americans. We don't usually live with our elders. Elders is the word for old people, it's the polite word. So we don't usually live with our elders. And my dad, because he's lonely, has two dogs. Okay? He doesn't want to live with dogs instead of his family. It's just not our culture. I would never say to my dad, come live with me, because I'd probably kill him, and he would kill me. Okay? <laughs> I love my father, but there's a reason I'm in Bali and my father is in West Virginia. And there's a reason that we only talk to each other once a week. Um, some American families are a lot closer and some are even farther apart. But my father has two dogs, that's all he talks about. I call from Bali, I've talked to him twice since I've lived here, and all I hear about are his dogs. Um, here, I think it's great. You all, somebody in your family has your grandparents living with them. Your grandparents take care of the younger generation because they're home. So you don't have to have babysitters. You have someone you trust taking care of your children and instilling in them the traditions that you want. So I really like this. And I'm scared that in about 10 years my father will be living with me because I will become Balinese. But um, this makes me look at my culture and think, huh, this should change. And that's what's good about global perspectives and changing locations. Um, this is a bad thing about my culture. <laughs> um, in my culture, I am the most important person there is. It is me first and then you. And maybe not you yet. My, me first, then my family, then my other people. And so it's always me, me, me. Okay? 
So if something goes wrong, it's because you're trying to hurt me. It's not because there's a problem. So I was at the airport a couple weeks ago, and I went to the wrong gate because Indonesia loves to put the wrong gate number on the boarding passes. So I went to Pinto Sebu, and there were only Bule sitting there. There were no Indonesians. So I knew something was wrong, because why are there only Bule taking a flight? So I went up to the man, and I said, Bob, I want to go to Dumbazar. And he said, yeah. And I said, he said, Pintu Sebulu. And I said, yeah, but here, no sign for Dumbazar. And so he said, yeah, you're supposed to be at Simulan. Okay, no one told us. So I went and sat down at the right gate, and the other boule saw and came over and started yelling at the man. Why didn't you tell me? I almost missed my flight. Why are you being so rude to us? It's not our fault we don't speak your language. They took it as a personal attack. Whereas I took it as, it's crazy and unorganized, and this is how it is when you travel. Okay? And that's because Westerners think, a lot of times, it's all about me. And it's kind of sad, but that's how it is. And that's why we're very competitive, if you've ever noticed. Um, maybe you get this. Um, let me see if I can... Just for one second. I just want this one. Is it on? Hello? Okay, so. If I stand right here, how do you feel? You do? Okay, good. You're, you're Western. Okay, so we like personal space. Americans especially like to be able to go like this and touch no one. We don't want you standing very close. Um, in lines in Bali, people tend to stand like this. <laughs> and it makes me really nervous. And the whole time I'm standing on mine, all I can think about is why is she standing so close to me? <laughs> why? Why is she touching me? Why is she touching me? And if you said to me, how are you, I wouldn't know the answer. Because all I'm thinking about is why are you touching me? <laughs> Stay away. And it's not that I don't want to be touched. I like to be touched. But I don't want to be touched like this. This is scary. Okay. Um, so if you notice, in America and Western lines, we tend to have space between us. And in Indonesia and in Asia, because I've seen this, people stand very close. Um, in the airplane, when I want to get off the airplane, everybody stands. And the door is still closed, so there's nowhere to go. So I always think, why are you standing on top of me? <laughs> so, um, personal space is a big deal. We do like to touch, okay? One of the things I miss the most living in Indonesia is hugs. You guys don't hug. And if you do hug, it's between your family or a girl and a girl. But once in a while, I'll forget that I'm in Indonesia and I'll hug a man. I did it recently. I thought he was going to cry. <laughs> I went to a friend's wedding. I love this person. I saw his father. I was very excited for his father because his son is getting married. So I hugged his father. <laughs> who knows that I miss hugs, so this is what he does. He'll go, okay, you can hug me. <laughs> okay, so it's getting better, but this is a difference. Um, men don't touch women, especially in the other islands. You guys are a little different. Um, and uh, you guys freak out, at least my students freak out when I touch them. And in America, I touch my students all the time. It's to let them know I'm there. So if I see you doing something bad, and I want you to know I know you're doing it, I'll put my hand on you. And that way you're like, oh, she knows I'm on my cell phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we touch, my students hug me all the time. It's not shocking. It's sh it would be shocking if I was a man. I don't know why. But there's a little bit different if I was a man, my students wouldn't hug me as much. 
But my female and male students will often come to me and say, I need a hug. And I'll say, oh, okay. And I'll give them a hug. And so that's one thing. We love our personal space. I don't want to be able to touch you when I'm talking. When I have a conversation, I probably will step away from you, and you will probably step closer. And so you'll notice if a bule and an Indonesian are, Indonesian are talking, you'll have the bule step back and the Indonesian get closer. Okay? So you should watch. I mean, it's a fun thing to observe, this personal space between different cultures. Because what I think is comfortable, you might think is strange. Um, another thing I notice is females here who I don't really know, colleagues, will touch me. And to me that's strange, because we're not friends, we're just colleagues. But they'll touch me here. How are you doing? Or they'll grab my waist. Okay. For me, that's a little too much. Okay. And I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm just saying I'm not used to it. I have, um, Bob Perry met him, my friend Fabio. He lives in Picambaro. And in America, men don't touch men that much. And, <laughs> and one of his colleagues, whenever he talks to Fabio, rubs his leg. And Fabio is horrified. Fabio's like, oh, what is this man doing? Why is he touching me? And that's how it is with us. It's not that we don't want it, it's that we don't know why you're touching. And for him, he thinks that the guy likes him. Because this is very close. This is very, this is a little too close. So, it's a difference in culture. So, we like our personal space, but that doesn't mean we don't like to be touched. Um, I have friends here who speak French, and so they kiss me all the time, okay? And I can tell when an Indonesian has lived in the West, because they will treat me like the West. So, Pakari will shake my hand and he'll hug me, which is very American, or sorry, Australian. Very Australian, very Western. Okay, and here you shake and then you put your hand to your heart, which I love. And in Bali, you guys do this, right? And when I do this in Java, people say, do you live in Bali? Yes. <laughs> so when I go back to America, <laughs> Okay, so the white kid is not a boy, it's a child. <laughs> and this is um, the way we look at, this is the way we view a, a child in the family. So, uh, in Asian culture, and maybe you'll agree with me, maybe you won't, uh, the child is the center of the family, right? The family revolves around the child. The child wants to do one thing, and it happens. And Sorry, but boys are usually more important than girls, right? So a lot of my friends who have children, if they don't have a boy, they have three children because they're hoping to get one. In American culture, yes, some of us want boys, some of us don't want boys, but the child is treated as part of the family, of course, but the world does not revolve around them. I mean, it does depend on the family. There are some families that dote on their child, which means adore and worship their child. But in my family, if I threw a temper tantrum, my father would not stop. He would just keep walking. And he would leave me there. So, if I throw a temper tantrum here, and my dad needed to go to the pasar, he would keep going. And if I didn't want to get left behind, I better stop, okay? Where I live in Bali, there's a family with two children. And whenever that little kid throws a temper tantrum, everybody stops. What's wrong? Oh, what do you mean? What happened? Oh. For me, that's very spoiled. But for maybe your culture, or maybe just this family, that's what you do. And so, um, maybe we don't treat our children with enough respect. I don't know which one is wrong, but for me, it's very hard to watch how uh, children act here and get away with it. Because in America, they would be considered spoiled. But that's my view, so it might be wrong. Um, oh, this I don't really have to talk about, and it seems like this isn't true anymore with young people, but Americans drink Coke, and Eastern drink tea. I don't know if this is true, because I live in Indonesia, and I like Escalera. 
<laughs> That's so cool. And when I go out with my driver and buy him a drink, he always wants a happy soda. Which I think, uh, sorry, soda gambira. Right? And I don't like soda gambira, but he loves it. So I don't know if this is really true, but this is the perspective maybe that some people have. Americans drink a lot of Coke. I happen to drink a lot of Coke. Most Americans don't. Uh, maybe. And the view is that Eastern people, Easterners, drink a lot of tea. Which, I would say in Indonesia, it's a lot of este, right? You guys love este manis. <laughs> and it is very manis. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know this one, and it's true, and I'm sorry. <laughs> um, there's a term for this in Indonesia that I didn't know existed until I moved to Indonesia. So, if you make plans with me to meet at 12 for lunch, I will be there at 12. I might even be there five minutes before 12, because I don't want to be late. If you make plans with me to be there at 12, maybe you'll get there at 12.30. Maybe. Right? I don't know why you all have this habit. And it makes me laugh every time. Because here, I'm in Indonesia, so I have to adapt. So I just, okay. And now I leave my house at 12, because I know you're not going to be there. So now I'm starting to be late. Okay. When I go back to America, I'm going to have to go, I'm in Indonesia, I'm sorry I'm late. Um, uh, and uh, so, some advice. Boys, if you want to date a boule, if you show up at her house late, she will not wait for you. Okay, it's considered in my culture very rude to be late. Um, it says that I am more powerful and I can show up when I want. So, if you want to date a boule, you need to be on time. Um, because females especially find it rude if men are late. And if you want to get a job with an American or Western company, it's very important you get there on time. And you can actually lose your job if you're late too many times. Um, so, I have a friend, and we made plans to go to the movies, and he showed up at my house two hours late. And I was mad. And my friend, who I was texting, because I thought he was dead. I mean, who shows up two hours late? I was convinced something was wrong. And he was like, I'm so sorry. I had no pulsa. And I was like, I should, we can't go to the movies. So that is the difference between our cultures. And it's one that drives me crazy. Um, this is, this is true, I think this is changing a little in the West, I think we're taking more photos because of cell phones, but I didn't ever know what a tonksis was until I moved to the Middle East. I mean, I'm tempted to buy tonksis and bring them back to America and sell them. Because I don't think we have them, maybe we do since I've left, but this stick that you get to look at yourself, I don't understand. Um, I was on a plane uh, last week, and a woman was holding up the whole group of passengers because she wanted to take a selfie of herself in the aisle of the plane. I was like, boo, boo, privacy. And she was like, sneak. <laughs> standing in a plane, but um, it tends to be that we take photos, don't worry, I'm obsessed, but I take one or two, and then I look at what I'm doing. I was at Borobudur, I felt like the Indonesians were at Borobudur just to take selfies of Borobudur behind them. I was at Borobudur because it's an amazing place, and I highly recommend if you have a bet to get there. Um, so this is a cultural difference that always makes me laugh. Because everybody wants to take a and selfie. Sandy, can you raise your hand? Yes, okay. Good, so. Uh, we can talk about the melting pot also. Let me talk about it. And, uh, actually, I also still a little bit not clear about it. 
Um, so, um, because there are so many immigrants that live in America, yeah. and you said that because there's a melting pot and you create a new culture from so many different cultures. So, can you yourself recognize or identify your own, I mean, your original American culture? And can you give an example? Or which culture that comes from those melting? <laughs> So, uh, what's interesting about America is as much as we are proud to be American, we're also proud of our different cultures. So, there's uh, a lot of times celebrations for Puerto Ricans and Irish and Germans, but we also have a mixed culture. So, if you live in the South, you tend to eat different things than if you live in the North. And we're very proud of that. So if you, um, I'm going to talk about food because that's what I like the most. Uh, if you go to Florida, you'll probably be uh, advised to eat a Cuban sandwich, which is pork and ham and uh, mustard and pickles on bread. If you go to Texas, you'll be told to eat chili, which is um, like a soup, but it's thicker. It's called a stew. And it's got red beans and meat and a lot of tomato, and it's very spicy. If you go to the north, like Minnesota, where there used to be a lot of Scandinavians, okay, that's where they tended to immigrate, um, you would probably eat more Scandinavian food. Um, but even though we are different cultures, we all celebrate each other. So Irish people celebrate uh, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. And a lot of people like to go out and party for our holiday. Um, and a lot of people will eat Irish food, which is usually a special bread. And a lot of times we eat corned beef and um, uh, vegetables, especially cabbage. So that's food. <laughs> you can also see musical differences. Um, a long time ago, a lot of immigrants from Ireland came to a part of America called the Appalachia, which is the east, where there's mountains. And now, there's traditional dance from this area that can be compared to the dance in Ireland. And they are quite alike, but they've also changed a little because they've been separated for 100, 200 years. So we do still have our original cultures, but we also have changed them a little because we live on a different side of the ocean. That is your question? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, um, maybe I should invite them to ask you questions because, you know, this is part of our culture too. Uh, in my class, I always tell my students that in this cross-cultural understanding, we learn in order to know. And by knowing each other's culture, we should respect each other. So none of the culture in my class saying as superior or inferior, we are equal. I mean, we respect each other. And none of the culture is look down, look up and look down. Okay, so my students, my cross culture students here. Don't worry about your English. About silence, space, pattern. Yeah, really good. Oh, yes. <laughs> you are not my cross cultural understanding and intercultural understanding. Thank you. Uh, intercultural, Mike. Um, so you want to know if there's any cultural uh, interaction between Indonesians and Americans? Yes. yes. Uh, well, I'm here. <laughs> um, part of the part of the beauty of being here is I'm on, my family sees all my photos of Facebook, and they see Bali completely differently than a year ago. So that's one way. Um, I'm scared when I go back. Hello? I'm scared when I go back to America that I won't be able to find Indonesian food, but I was quite on the internet, and New York City has quite a few Indonesian restaurants. One of them is called Sanor, which makes me laugh, because that's them bizarre. Um, and we do see a lot of Bali, but we don't see a lot of Indonesia. 
Now, we have a president right now who used to live in Indonesia. So Americans now know about Indonesia Siddiqui, but we don't know a lot. I would say that a lot of Americans don't travel because of money. Um, and if they're going to travel, they usually can't afford to come to Asia. So uh, most of what they learn is from TV, um, sadly. But that's part of the reason why I'm here, so I can go back and talk about this country. Um, you guys don't know this, but you're the large, maybe you don't know this, you're one of the largest Muslim countries in the world. You're also one of the largest democratic country, uh, democracies in the world. That's working. So you guys have a lot to be proud of, and I think you guys are growing and going to become more and more important in the world. And so America is starting to pay more attention to you all, especially because you just got a new president, and he's young, and he kind of looks like Obama, a little bit. Um, but I don't think most Americans know a lot about Indonesia. When I told people I was moving here, a lot of them said, well, hi. Okay? But when I said, I'm moving to Bali, they said, oh, you're so lucky. So they saw it as two different places. So what I like to do is I would say, I'm moving to Indonesia, and they'd go, why? And I'd say, yeah, I'm going to be living in Bali. <gasps> You're so lucky. It's the same place. But a lot of Americans don't realize that. So I would say my culture is not very smart geographically. Okay? And it's a little embarrassing, but um, some, some Americans don't know a lot about geography. My little sister did not thought that London was a country for a long time, and it's not. <laughs> okay. So um, I think you guys are becoming more and more important in our world, especially with the change that just happened back in October. Um, and I think you'll continue because your country is moving up, right? And you guys are the future. So you're going to keep, hopefully, making it seen. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Julie. Well, thank you very much. My name is Dali from the fifth semester. So, uh, I really work, uh, I'm really curious about the liftiness culture in America. So, why do many people, mostly in America, live the nest right when they are 18? because it's still really strange in Indonesia and even in Bali to live our home and deal with many things by ourselves. So I think that's pretty cool, but because I live with my parents and I, I want to know more about the world by myself. Thank you. So this question was about emptiness, leaving home. Um, it's, it, especially in the past, when you finished high school, your parents expected you to leave. Um, either to go to college, or to get a job, and make enough money that you didn't need them. And so, that has been the culture. Um, when I went to college when I was 18, I moved into college, I lived in a dorm for four years, and when I finished, I wasn't expected to go home. I was expected to find a job, and live on my own. And it's really scary, but that's how our culture is. And there's a joke in America, when you go to college, when you leave from college, that your parents take your bedroom and turn it into something else. Like your father might take it and turn it into his own little place where he can build trains. Or your mother might turn it into a place where she can put all her shoes, okay? Um, Nowadays, with it being more expensive in America, some kids, some parents, are allowing their children to move back in after college until their children are able to live on their own. But my culture often thinks if you live at home, then there must be something wrong. Maybe you can't afford it, or you're not smart enough to live by yourself. And that's changing now. And if you live in New York City, um, because it's very expensive, and because a lot of people go to school in New York City, a lot of kids do stay at home until they finish college. But it's very hard, because your parents want you to act like an adult, but you're still living under their roof, and you can't have your girlfriend over, 
and you can't watch TV till two in the morning, and you can't make your own dinner. So it's, it's very hard because you've got parents who want you to grow up and be adult, and parents who still see you as being five and not being allowed to do all the things you should be allowed to do. So yes, it is a huge difference in culture. I don't know if I could live with my father until I got married. I think my father or I would have killed each other because we very, we are very stubborn. Um, but you're lucky. You have a mom who you see every day and she makes you dinner. So, yes. I mean, I spent, when I was in college, I get home from class and I'd have to figure out what to eat and I'd have to cook or I'd have to put a sandwich together. And so you get home and your mom's taking care of you and I'm assuming she's doing your laundry, and she's probably cleaned the house, whereas I had to do all of that myself. So you might look at it as, wow, you get to be independent and stay up till two in the morning and have parties and boys over, and I look at it as, you don't have to pay for your food, you don't have to cook your dinner, and your laundry was done for you. Um, and that's another thing. I also have had a job since I was 14. I've had to support myself. Whereas I have a feeling most of you don't work or haven't worked until you've finished high school. Most Americans have to have a job because they want to pay for college and they want to move out of the house. So that's another difference. Okay? Okay, any other questions? Ah. And you two decide who's next. <laughs> ladies first. Always ladies first before you want to do it. Okay, thank you for your chance. Uh, my name is Julia. I'm from the fifth semester. Uh, I'd like to know uh, how Americans make the reasons when they want to decline the invitations from friends. Uh, do they include the personal, uh, the, the personal life as the reasons, or you just uh, hide the truth, hide the, the, the truth, and just tell them the lie? Thank you. What, what kind of invitation? Like a wedding? Or uh, just not for no, no, just lunch. Okay. Um, it depends on the friend. If it's a close friend, I'll tell the truth. Like, if it's my best friend and she says, let's go get lunch, I might say, no, I have to work, or I have to do this. But if it's someone I'm becoming friends with, and, or if the reason is embarrassing, like, I didn't do laundry in two weeks, I have to do laundry, I might not tell them. But we're not very shy about telling the truth, usually. Um, especially if it's someone I'm close with. Uh, there are situations where I'll tell a white lie. Do you know what a white lie is? Yeah? It's when you tell a lie that doesn't hurt anyone. So sometimes I might say, ah, if a guy, if a man asks me out and I don't want to go out with him, I'm not going to tell him the truth. I'll usually say, sorry, I have plans, or sorry, I have to uh, stay home and take care of my father. Okay? Okay, um, I'm sorry if my address is not terrible. Your English is great. Okay, uh, thank you. For it. Okay, there are probably two questions that I would like to okay. ask. The first one, uh, I heard that America is a mixed country. There are many citizens there, right? So, if I ask you, which one do you prop the most? Your Irish, uh, your your ancestor, or becoming an American? So, that's the first question. The second question is, I have taken cross-cultural understanding course, and my lecturer say that when American people visit uh, somebody's house, the first things that they visit is, they look at is the bathroom. Is that true or not? Because my lecturer say it like that. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, American people prefer to look at the toilet and the bathroom instead of the dining room or something like that. Okay, that's my question. Thank you. <laughs> See, this is the problem. It's hard to generalize because maybe your lecturer had the experience of some crazy American being obsessed with the bathrooms. Um, I find it very. Uh, huh. I, I used to live in France. And in France, a lot of times, the tendency is when you come to someone's house, they give you a tour of the house. In America, we don't always offer a tour, okay? Sometimes we are like, I didn't clean my house, but my living room is clean, so they 
can sit in the living room. Um, and uh, so yes, I like going to the bathroom. I don't think I have a preference to the bathroom over the dining room, but um, so I don't know uh, about that. But your other question is a very interesting and hard question to answer. Um, I was brought up in a family, my mother is very proud that we are Irish. Um, I was told that I was 100% Irish most of my life until I got to high school and I interviewed my grandparents for a project. So I was always very proud to be Irish, and I still am, but living in Indonesia, I don't tell people I'm Irish, I tell them I'm American. And I am definitely proud to be American, and people who know American culture can look at my name and know that I am Irish. So, I am, if, you, if I have to pick one first, I'm obviously going to be American first. But I am not American, just like you're not just Indonesian. So are you Balinese or Indonesian? First. What are you? You. Are you Indonesian or Balinese first? Balinese. Really? Hmm. So in my experience in Udayana, when I asked this question, the whole room says Balinese. Unless there's kids from another island. Now the kids from Jawa tend to say Indonesian. But the kids from the East tend to say Timor, or Papua, or Balinese. So I think it's interesting to ask that question, because even in your culture, there's a huge difference between Balinese and Javanese, right? And a lot of Balinese, when I asked, did you hear? A lot of people said Balinese. So there's a huge pride in this island and where you all come from. And I think it's a good thing um, it's not a bad thing. So it's hard to say you're one thing, especially with a country that's so diverse, because if I think of an Indonesian, is the Indonesian going to be wearing a kabaya, or are they going to be wearing one of those black hats? Or are they going to be going to temple, or are they going to church? So it's the same. You have to decide what's more important. It's like saying, which child do you love more? Your first child or your second child? Right? Are there other questions? Ah, in the back. Oh, we have a microphone. Sorry. Jake, thank you. My name is Ango. Uh, I have two questions also. Uh, my first question, uh, let me tell you about a little bit my experience. When I ride my motorbike to my hometown at Bandung, I pass it, I pass Kuta, and I, I stop it. Uh, in traffic light, and I meet bullies also, and they just say hi to another bully in the back side of his of their motorbike, and he just pointed where they will go, and then he go together. I'm curious, and and then I follow them, and they have a uh, dinner. And so my question is, do you ever? think that you will easily to make friends with strangers. And my second, my second question is I, uh, about races. Uh, you said that America has many races. Don't you ever think about America will lose the original races of America? That's the second question. I'm sorry if my speaking was good. <laughs> Thank you. answer your question. So the first one, you, it sounds like you stalk Boule. You yes. follow them? Yes. <laughs> so all the Boule and Kuta are scared of you now. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so this question is a hard question because I am actually an introvert. Do you know what an introvert is? I don't like big crowds and I don't like meeting new people because I'm scared. So. Um, I don't tend to make friends easily. I am friendly and I pretend, but I am the kind of person that has very small amount of friends, but very good friends. And there's another kind of person called an extrovert, right? Who loves meeting new people, loves friends, has lots of friends, and yes. But um, I find living in Bali, when I see a boule, in my head I'm always worried, are you okay? Do you need anything? 
because I know what it's like to be here, not speak the language, and have no idea what's happening. So I always, even though I'm an introvert, when I see a boule, if I see something wrong, I will ask. Because I know, even if I don't know if they're American, I know what it's like to be foreign, and I want to make sure everything's okay. And usually I'm with an Indonesian, and I'll say, go help them, go, go, go help them. Because a lot of times the boule are lost, and a lot of times my friends know how to get wherever they need. So, um, your other question, ooh, race. So, I have, I don't really like the word race, um, because I feel like we're all one race. We are human. Um, ethnicity. It depends. The original ethnicity in the United States was Native American. I'm so Indonesian. Okay. I'm Indonesian. Good. Um, because of my friend. You said your friend, okay. My junior asked two questions. Okay. It will be rude if I don't ask two. Oh no, you can ask two or one. Yeah. Oh, ask one? You can ask two or one. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that your statement was about magic hand. Yeah. The, the Iron Man stuff. Iron Man, Iron yeah. Man. Well, first I will give an explanation. Uh -huh. It's not to protect you, okay. but to make you look bigger. Okay. Why? Because uh, when from far, I might not see you. Uh -huh. So that's why we use this, so people can see us okay. when we cross the street. Okay. But uh, if you cross not in the place that you are supposed to cross, then uh -huh. you will be. Like where, where are those places? I have uh, never seen them. The zebra cross. I don't see them. Uh, the white stripes on the road. Right. I never see them. You never see them. In Jambazar. They are in Sis. And where is it? It's Singaraja? It's in Singaraja, Sis too. Okay, so last night. Okay. General Sugarman. Yes. Yeah? What's the road here? What's the road here? There's a gas station and a road. And then there's a beach. You can find under the traffic light. I didn't see any traffic lights. So, how can you encourage people to understand? 
uh, because everybody is unique, people have their own characteristics. So how you can encourage people to understand you? Because it seems that you deal with lots of people that are different from you, yes. from cultural perspective, so, so, so I want to understand it. Okay. Thank you very much. In my neighborhood, um, yes, neighbors were very caring because we've lived there a long time. So um, I never snuck away in my house. At least I never got caught. And I never got caught. So, uh, but it does happen in America that if you're sick, maybe your neighbor will bring food, or if, um, if maybe uh, you come home late at night. My sister lives in a neighborhood with a neighbor late sometimes, so her neighbor will often pick my nephew up from school, okay? Or um, at Christmas, which is in December, people exchange cookies, okay? So yes, we are still caring for each other. In New York City, it's a little different because people move a lot and you don't tend to stay in the apartments a lot. So you might meet one or two of your neighbors and say hello to them, but you might not ever see them or you might not care. I, uh, the last five years I lived in New York, I lived in the same apartment, and I knew two or three of my neighbors, and when Hurricane Sandy happened, I don't know if you guys heard of this huge hurricane, um, we, I lived in a basement, my neighbor said come sleep at my house, because if the rain comes, you might not be able to leave your house. So, yes, we do care about each other, um, but New York City's a little different because it's a little cramped path. Okay. Your second question. Wait, I can't remember. Hold on. Things that were wrong. Oh, left-handed. I'm left-handed. Right. So how do I get people to understand that cultures are different and it's okay? That's why I'm here. That's why I am Ule in Indonesia. Um, I think everything I do, people notice because I stick out. And so I think it gives me an opportunity to explain my differences. So I eat with my left hand, but I will say, I'm sorry I'm eating with my left hand, but I'm left-handed. Okay. Um, I hmm, when I my, one of my colleagues, who is my Bahasa teacher, she and I are good friends. So now when I see her, I bring her ole ole. That's not part of my culture. We don't do that. Um, uh, there's there's many things. My students think I'm crazy. I do Diana. Because I am completely different from their other teachers. And I often say, I'm oh, sorry, I'm American, this is how we are. Uh, so I have no problems asking questions or being silly or taking my shoes off in class or setting up the projector myself. I don't tend to ask my students to do things because in America, my students would never help me. So, yes, we're different, but that's why I'm here to show you. Crazy. No, I'm not crazy, I'm American. Most of the time. Is that is you? That's all. Okay. Yes. It does? Okay. And next time you try to sneak a girl in your house. Uh, <laughs> next time. Try that again. Make sure the lights are out. Make sure the lights are not on your door. Uh, and don't sneak them into the front door or the back door. <laughs> I use the box now. Huh? I use the box. Use the box. Good. Wait up. It's also good. I drove home. Okay. Any other questions? Madam. Thank you. Uh, I'm Dewey. Hi. Uh, uh, I want to ask questions about what you just explained to us. I saw the night, uh, which the table shows American news and Asian news uh, to the point with American news. Uh, which organization and Asia which has organization. Can you give us uh, a more explanation okay. because I am doing it. Thank you. So this is going to be interesting. Um, this, is, this reminds me of a conversation Pat Perry and I had. Uh, Balinese spend a lot of time with ceremonies, right? That's your past. Um, you guys probably spend maybe 40% of your time is that too much kind of? Um, a lot of times when I want to do something with a friend, I'll hear, oh, I can't have ceremony, 
right? And you probably spent a bit of money on your ceremonies. And it's hard, a lot, sorry, I don't, I've never, I don't know. So you spend a lot of money on ceremonies. Um, I have, my driver doesn't make, my driver does not make a lot of money. And for me, as a Westerner, I think it's crazy that he spends the little money he has on ceremonies instead of on his sons or his family. But that's a difference. We look to our future, so instead of me spending all the time on ceremonies, I might be spending time uh, trying to improve my life, maybe uh, my education or something. And it might sound like I'm criticizing you, but I respect that you, I think it's admirable that you um, love your God so much that you're willing to do this, because I don't have a love like that that I would spend that much time and that I would spend that much money. And I also think it shows a lot of respect for your past that I probably don't have because it's not part of my childhood and it's not part of my culture. So you all look to the past. Uh, a lot of Balinese don't want to go abroad because they don't know who will take care of their ancestors, right? So in a family where there's the first man, he's not allowed to leave unless the second sibling will help out while the first sibling is out of the country. Um, I don't think I would ever consider my family before making a decision to live abroad. And that makes me sound very selfish, right? So that's another difference. Uh, Balinese tend to stay to help the family. And maybe if there's more than one sibling, you take turns. At least that's how one of my colleagues does it. His brother does it for a couple of years, and then now he's going to go abroad. Um, but Americans don't usually think about that sort of thing before making decisions about their future. They don't think about the past. Is that cool? Yes. I don't think either culture is right or wrong. Any other questions? Yes, but, um, uh, I want to ask about uh, well, you're right. Valentine's Day, just like you, 
Um, except I think you guys have more more than one Valentine's Day. We just have one, February 14th. Um, March, we have St. Patrick's Day. I'm, I'm not talking about all holidays. We have Cinco de Mayo, which is in May. Um, I don't really celebrate, but a lot of people who live in, uh, in New York do. Uh, we celebrate by having Mexican food. Um, April, we have Easter, which is Christian. So we have a couple weeks off of school, one or two, depending on where you live. Uh, it's also called spring break. And July 4th is our August 17th. It's our Independence Day. Um, we don't always have the day off, but we have fireworks at night, which I don't think you guys actually have for Independence Day. Um, we have fireworks. Um, and uh, in October is my favorite holiday, Halloween. We all, uh, children go trick-or-treating and adults spend time scaring children, which is my favorite thing. Um, and we get to dress in costumes and there's lots of candy. We're in November. In a couple more weeks is a big American holiday called Thanksgiving. Um, it's very important that you're home for this holiday because because your parents make turkey and you have to complete it. Um, so I don't know if you guys have seen a real turkey, but it's big. And you cook it in the oven, and we have lots of side dishes, and you eat, and you eat, and you eat, and then you watch TV for the rest of And we talk about what we're thankful for. And then December is our big Christmas, which is important to some families who are Christian, but we have our vacation. Um, of two weeks, and uh, if you're Jewish, we have Hanukkah, usually in December, sometimes in November, which is eight days long. Um, but we don't have, you think we have a lot of vacation. I don't think we, we have spring break, we have Christmas, you're talking about Hermosky school. We have winter break, we have spring break, and then we have summer vacation, which is usually the month of July and August, about. You guys have the same things. And then you have all of these days like Alangan and Nyepi Day and a lot of days where I show up to school to teach and there's <laughs> that's the biggest thing that makes me laugh here. The little kids always say, hello Miss Bear. And I was like, hi, <laughs> Mr. Hello. Um, it's, it's, for me, it's hard to make friends with someone I only see for two minutes. So, if you have time and you see someone lost, you can always say, oh, can I help you? Are you okay? Do you need it? Um, and we're willing to make friends. We're not evil. Um, when I said that we like to be individual, I just meant that we are not upset to be home alone. If my friend calls and says, do you want to have dinner tonight? I'm going to say yes. It's not, be and I'm not, it's, I'm not going to be like, oh, I want to be by myself. No, it's just that when I'm alone, I'm okay with being alone, most of the time. Um, I do like to have family, I do like to eat dinner with people, but every night, if I don't have plans, it's okay. Um, I find here that I'm often alone because everybody in my age is married. So I'm always looking to be with people and to make friends. Um, so, I think just simply asking, would you like to get some coffee, or can I show you this place, especially if they live here, they would love to make friends. Um, I know I am always happy to go out with new people. Um, culture shock. Uh, huh. It was pretty shocking. What was, uh, I don't even know where to start. Um, when I first came here, I, the food. I'm not saying your food is bad, I'm just tired of rice when I first came here. Um, I like to cook, I don't have an oven. I know why I don't have an oven, it's too hot, but I miss having an oven. I would kill for cheese right now, and I don't mean the cheese you guys eat. For me, that's not cheese, I miss cheese. Um, we have zillions of kinds of cheese in America. Uh, culture shock, um, not touching people, I miss touching people, I touch people all the time. If I touch people here, I usually don't like well, um, TV, I miss watching TV. I don't understand, I watch, because I don't speak Bahasa very well, I watch uh, Channel 9, Trans TV, every night. I am so tired of Spider-Man. <laughs> and Transformers. 
You got the, the same movies every. So I knew nothing about bootlegs in America are illegal. So if you want to make friends with a bootleg, show them how to buy bootlegs because they don't know. Um, I miss watching TV. Uh, movies here are always action. I'm tired of that. I want to see some drama. I want to see some girl movies. Girls talking about boys. I miss that. Um, clothing here is different. Batik. Um, I am not a huge fan of Batik. I love Enbet. Love it. So I'm happy to be living in Bali. Um, what else? The language is hard. Everybody here says Balinese is so easy. Or not Balinese. Bahasa Indonesia is so easy. It is not easy. Nobody wants to speak to me in Bahasa Indonesia. Everybody speaks to me in English. No matter how poor the English is. Um, and so a lot of times when people speak to me in English, I know that my Bahasa is better. But they won't speak to me. Um, and uh, <laughs> a lot of times people speak to me in Balinese, trying to be funny. Um, so yes, there's a lot of culture shock. But I love the shock. I love the difference. Every day something happens where I'm just like, whoa. Uh, I went to Starbucks a couple weeks ago in Denpasar. I turned on what I thought was the faucet and I took a shower. Okay? I ended up soaking wet at, at Starbucks because I turned on a faucet and it was the shower. That, only, that would only happen to a boule. Um I fell in a hole. No Bahasa, no Indonesian is going to fall in a hole. Only a boule would fall in a hole. So, yes, every day I have to remind myself, hati hati. Okay. Well, I hope you guys understand that everyone. Oh. Thank you. Um, I hope you understand everything I said is my belief, so don't think all Boule have the same thoughts. Okay, remember we're all different, just like you all are all different. And I hope you guys get to go home and do something fun this afternoon and not study or go to ceremonies. <laughs> Alright, have a lovely afternoon or day. Thank you for having me. So everyone, once again, let's give a big round of applause to Megan. Let's go to this function. Um, we don't need to get any money. Yeah. Of course not. What I mean is, money is not everything. You can invite people to come to your place without thinking and talking about money. Okay? So, you have that mindset. Bureaucracy and money is something else. Okay? Do you like this kind of event? Yeah. Do you want to have more? Yeah. Don't worry. There are six and more already lined up. Okay? So every Saturday or at least twice a month, every Saturday, if possible, we will invite someone out there and also inside the uni the music department to share. Okay? To inspire. You can have why 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 I invite Meg and others? Basically the department wants you to have something else. You can be very smart. Your GPA or IPK is 4.1 but if you don't have soft skills, global perspectives, critical thinking, it's nothing. If you cannot work in a team, it's nothing. If you can decide, decide uh, any cases, okay, making a decision, there's nothing to your talents. Okay? So, again, thank you very much, Megan, for coming all the way from the department. She is going to see some things around here uh, after this event. So if you care to join, just post it. Uh, and Megan really wants to see the dolphins. Okay. So hopefully they will appear in the morning. Yeah, because uh, there's no guarantee.
Uh, uh, I believe that there are still some questions there. So if you don't mind, you can just show or let them know your contact address or any contacts that you have. So you can email. I'm, I'm sure that Megan will be happy to have you. Yeah. Okay, my email address is very easy. It's Meg, my name is M-E-G, in Indonesia at gmail.com. Okay? Alright, if you write me there, I'll try to write you back. So, again, it's Meg, dot, Meg in Indonesia. Okay, Meg in Indonesia. Okay, at gmail.com. Okay, if you want to maintain contact, remember, networking, networking is very much important now. Yeah. You don't have friends only from your past. Okay. Also, I would like to thank that here actually there are some students and representatives from other departments. Okay. Uh, I see that those come from uh, Diploma 3 of English uh, also coming here. So thank you for coming. Right? So I hope that in the future we can always do this collaboration. Okay, there are some other events which probably need other departments to come because they will benefit also from this. And the color is uh, brown, for example. And the Chinese or Japanese will see that, well, inside is empty, not the box is brown. Okay, open your mind, be global, but retain your local wisdom. Okay, I once again thank you very much and then I will return uh, the event uh, or ceremony to the master. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, finally we have arrived at the end of this event. Now we invite the head of English Education Department. But I don't think that this is a gift. This is uh, our appreciation to you.